The point of making art is to communicate and contribute to the society. A famous quote by a well-renowned artist and social activist Keith Haring. Unfortunately, Keith died very early, almost at 32 years of his age, but the fire of that art and the social activism is still alive across the world as well as in India. Art is present in almost all the places, but we are today at one of such places known as Bangalore Creative Circle. We are here to take interview of a famous tape artist, Nitin Sandhu, and we are also here to discover what amazing place is this and what are all the things that we can see inside all the artists, their contributions, each and everything. It will be a very interesting video, so stay tuned. We will directly jump cut to the interview test. Hi Nitin, welcome to this episode. So firstly, uh, let's introduce you to our audience. Sure. So can you give us a quick intro so that everyone can know about what what are you pursuing and what kind of art are you making? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Nitin Sadhu. I'm a visual artist from Bangalore. And uh, I like creating artworks uh, that are interactive. And I work with various mediums such as, I start off working with tape first, and then moved on to like more like light based installations. And I'm working with more working with like glass now, glass and also discarded uh, discarded mediums such as e-waste and plastics and all of that. So I guess I, I, I like to create more than like, I like working with a lot of different mediums. So that's what I basically do. Okay, so uh, basically what I understood, like medium is not a constraint for you. Uh, yeah, uh, for me the thing yeah. is I, I like, I like being challenged. Like, you give me something, I like like figure out how to work with it and like right. try to do something with it. So that's right. fine. I think that that there's the youngest reflection of pursuing an art, mm -hmm. uh, like accepting a challenge and going through it. So uh, specifically talking about uh, tape art. So yeah. how did it come to you? How did you realize that it is something that you can start with, and how that journey started? Sure. Yeah. So this was very. Uh, it happened by accident actually. So. I was actually working as a sound engineer at a friend's studio okay. before I started with art and uh, my sound card blew out and I had no work for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, there was other art instructor who used to come and teach like watercolor paintings and stuff, stuff like that. And that's how I like got back. I used to always like draw and sketch back in school, but mm -hmm. like after school, I, I kind of like, I didn't really like concentrate on art, like college and all of that happened. So. Uh, so yeah, I think that's when uh, I got back into art and started with like painting again and sketching. Okay. And then I started doing more research about different mediums and I came across this artist from Amsterdam okay. who creates like uh, uh, artworks just with brown tape. Okay. And that's when I got like really curious. I immediately went and bought a roll of tape that night. I sat the entire night trying to figure okay. it out. And, and I was just like trying to like, I didn't even expect to like become an artist as such. Right. But then it was just like everyone's response was so great that, you know, they were like, you have to do like a show or like yeah. put out there. And I started getting a great response. Okay. And since then, I mean, like, that's how I came across tape and started, like, working with different kinds of tape. And right. then I moved on to color tape. Okay. Like, I, had, I did this uh, residency in Berlin. Okay. And they have, like, entire stationery shops just for tapes. Oh. And that's where I found a lot of these color tapes that you get. You don't get here, actually. Okay. In so India? Or? In India, you don't get them. You need oh. to order them online or something. So, most of the tapes, I found color tapes there. So, I started experimenting more with color tapes. Right. So, that's how tape became a medium for me, too. And... Um, about which year are we talking about when you actually, about that night when you bought uh, I think this was 2013, exactly like okay, about 10 so years it's, it's almost 10 years, 10 years now. Yeah. So as an artist, because see, medium and everything is just a form of expression. Sure. But as an artist, what do you think about the growth that you have gone through in the past 10 years? Growth in terms of exposure to your art, mm -hmm. your exposure to art and your art getting exposed to the audience. What is your experience throughout the 10 years, if you can summarize it a bit? Uh, I think it's been a wonderful experience, like especially like uh, getting to like meet different artists, collaborating with them especially. And I never thought that would, that was possible because I was a very introvert person. Okay. And art in a way helped me to like get out there because I had to speak to people. I had to like right, right. explain to them about right. my art all the time. So that's how I got comfortable like talking to people and it kind of helped me in a way to like, uh, like uh, put my work out there more and you know. Right interact with more people and that's why I started meeting more artists in the, like right. in the community here in Bangalore and we started collaborating doing different projects together and yeah it's been it's been a great experience so far 
got it so uh, in a way art is also a way of expressing if as you have mentioned that you are introverted and you don't feel very much comfortable yeah. talking with everyone so what do you think of how many people are there or what kind of awareness is there regarding if we just talk about the tape art sure. so do you occasionally find people who are into it or how is it i mean i don't know people who work with tape as a medium but uh, like i mean i guess the problem here is having this right kind of space where you know people can come and meet for example this space is a great place where you know mm-hmm. a lot of artists come here all the time we have like weekend jams where people come with spray yeah. cans and they just go crazy on the walls painting and all of that so i think you need a space like that where it's very yeah. important otherwise artists are usually people who are like who are like loners or try to like be by themselves mostly you know? right. so i think it's important that you have a space where people can come together and collaborate and you know right. have those interactions i think that's what's important so yeah so this place bangalore creative circles yeah. it has provided you a sense of community plus a Definitely. physical space also to pursue it so how did you get introduced to this particular uh, uh, so space? one of the co-founders is uh, has been a friend of mine for a long time so we met on his house he was constructing a house and he's got a crazy house and it's based on like the entire house is based on alice in wonderland oh so it's like a completely ripped out house you walk into the bathroom it's like a it's like a completely uv painted bathroom oh and he's he he loves art and he loves supporting artists right. so that's how i met him and uh, he always had this idea about creating a space right. he was a lawyer before but yeah. he always had this idea about creating a space for artists and such so me and a couple of other artists met with him and that's when he first leased out the space and we were like okay fine we're going to have this space yeah. here for artists set sort up of like a gallery space a work space a maker space as well right. So we have everything here, and we can build, build, and work together. So you guys have built this space from the scratch as yeah. artists. So is this place very openly uh, available for all the artists who want to pursue uh, any form of art, or is is there any closed community? I mean, there's no such thing as a closed community. All okay. artists are welcome mostly okay. here. Yeah. So mostly, so do people visit here just for you know getting out? Uh, in the field of art like okay yeah i mean the thing is we have a lot of workshops happening here okay so i mean every week they have like some kind of workshops like uh, painting or sketching or like right. it may be different things like a lot of different mediums okay graffiti workshops and sculpt- sculpting also right. woodworking so a lot of people come for this and once they see the place they're like excited and they want to come back right place, right so, it's yes. an exciting and beautiful yeah. space by the way so uh coming back to uh, the point where we were before so if we uh, talk about the inspiration behind pursuing art so it it can be very abstract yep. so it can be a maybe a childhood trauma and to a heartbroken story got it but if we talk about a particular piece of art mm-hmm. let's say you are making something so what what is the process of it how it starts Uh, for me, it's mostly like things I experience on a daily basis, or you know, okay. or maybe it's like music I listen to, or things that I see, or you know, something, so, something interesting that I see. Right. I so, think that's where that's where I get most of my inspiration from, or like, yeah. So it's more of an observational observation, yeah. Rather than you ponder a yeah. lot about what you want to make, you just observe. Yeah, and I'm very curious about different mediums, so I always like like I experiment a lot. Okay. So. Every piece is like more of an experimental piece. Got it. So if we talk about the tape art specifically yeah. and this beautiful yeah. piece which is right behind us, how much time and how it starts? What are the challenges while making it? Can you elaborate a bit about the process? Uh, do it. So uh, initially, I, when I first started with tape, it was quite. Uh, I found it quite difficult because it's sticky and you know it's right. like you kind of need to like get to know how to work with it, but. slowly as i started like working more with it i got comfortable and uh, so what i do is like this is more like a different form of tape art that i do from the brown tape art yeah it's more like line work right so i start off by like creating like a basic outline okay and then i start like layering it with like different colors and then you know got it that's how form the shape and the but some of the brown tape ones have to be backlit in order for them to be See? Yeah, so it's basically the amount of light which light, comes. Yeah, exactly. So it's layer up to like ten yeah. to twelve layers for the darkest. Okay, so the amount of tape actually defines how much how tint much? of yeah. Uh, so it blocks out the light. So you know, the more layers you put, the darker shades. Got it. Right, so I can work right. like eight to ten shades of brown. So, so I think obviously it is. It it depends on how much uh, experience you have of the process to have yeah. that understanding. Okay, how much I have to put there yeah. to actually make that shade look as yeah. I want it to. 
so is there any learning resource also for like cuz this is yeah. very unique yeah. me personally i am listening to it for the yeah. first time even when we were checking your profile and we were just going through your work it yeah. was the first time when i was seeing the paper okay maybe i am a little naive in it but <laughs> in general like people are not that much about uh, aware about paper mm-hmm. so h- how someone can actually learn about it if they want to pursue it like i think there's a lot out there just on the internet itself okay. just need to like i think do your research and like mm-hmm. talk to more people or like you know i think that's the only way to go about it if you are like interested and if you really want to do it i think you'll find a way to do it okay and i think so, in the start it will include a lot of failed attempts also yeah yeah definitely like i like i mean i've been through a lot of i think uh, initially when i first started i think the first the problem was my pa- convincing my parents that i want to become an okay. artist because you know always indian parents right, right. right. i was going to come <laughs> to that yeah, question so that was my first hurdle but uh, i guess even they kind of uh, realize that there's something unique and there's something different right. and once they started seeing a few articles and like people like appreciating it they were like right. they were showing off to so we are nice like see, this for my son that so it became like a turn around like that it, it becomes a talking point yeah yeah so they've been quite supportive in that sense so why do you think there is always a generational conflict in pursuing art though our yeah. parents also enjoy seeing art and there's no one who can say okay i hate seeing art or mm-hmm. observing her so why there is always a generational conflict that okay if someone's son or daughter is going to pursue mm-hmm. a particular art form so they are always like in general people are like very resistive to it yeah so what do you think is the main reason behind because everyone loves art so what what's the core problem that other generation or maybe other people see in pursuing you know i guess it's more about the uh, probably be thinking that there's not enough success in the art field or they right. might not reach that point or there's there's no financial stability right i think that's one of the issues that i faced as well initially so right. i think that might be one of the concerns as well right so like so, it's but but it's a challenge of the field i think yeah in yeah. general uh, a lot of people must be facing these kind of challenges because mm-hmm. <clears throat> people are not that aware about yeah. okay that that's the value of yeah. art people generally see and they try to think about okay this it's a piece it must be this much mm-hmm. cost or what exactly. cause it cannot reflect the art cannot reflect actually how much effort someone has put behind yeah. it so apart from this one challenge that you are saying that mm-hmm. you also face in the beginning maybe so what other challenges do you think you regarding pursuing an art form or specifically the art that you are pursuing you think any challenges i think as when i was younger i think i was lucky enough to be in a school where uh, we had like arts and crafts class oh, so yeah. i was introduced to art at a very early age okay so i think that's that would be one of the very important factors if like i guess at a very young age like someone as like as young as a kid they could like pick it up quite easily and right. i think that's where they need to start okay at the at the school level and right and keep that going and through throughout the journey like were there any tougher times that you think as an artist you face or oh uh, i think it's mostly been like um dealing with some clients obviously you have the issue of dealing yeah. with some clients because because they know they don't they don't know the true value they don't appreciate the idea behind it they right. see the executed artwork right or it's always a fact about like uh, having that financial stability or right. having that monthly you know right so there's always those kind of challenges but i think if you keep if you keep working on it i'm sure like something something's going to come right. up so right now do you also pursue it like let's say for some commission work or if someone is interested in getting something done so yeah i, I do take a commission works as well okay. but uh, mostly i've been like collaborating with this space and like collaborating with different artists got it because i mean like people work with different mediums so if you all come together it, it can be a better piece right, right you know right. so we recently created a 30 foot uh, jellyfish sculpture in ranchi okay for the radisson blue hotel okay and this was like made of resin it had like lights like program oh. lights going on it was like it was like a massive 30 foot sculpture got it so how do people actually reach out to you or in general they reach out to bangla creative service like uh, i think usually it's more like word of mouth like people who know me or through friends or got it. always the social media or instagram so yeah, that's one of the main uh, main platforms i think and i also have a website okay so i think people, yeah that we yeah through. so the first question that i have in my mind is like how much you think social media impacted in broadcasting your art like before coming to uh, social media and after that is yeah. there any significant difference 
in terms of people reaching out to not just for commission mm-hmm. work but in general just for talking about your art and artwork you know it's definitely helped me a lot uh, but i guess i'm i'm not that good <laughs> with okay. social media so yeah. i think that's the reason but i think i'm also learning right now to like how to like you know post more videos or put out my mm-hmm. work put, put more of my work out there and talk to more artists mm-hmm. and like you know, and you get to see so so many different artists work which yeah. are like inspiring and motivating so i think that's also important and social media is uh yeah you have access to a lot of different right. forms of art and you get to see and learn a lot so i think that's right. that's kind of like plus i think if you get a good one big hit on social media it's like okay. it goes to a lot of people yeah. and then it just rotates still waiting your, for it yeah <laughs> regarding this uh, particular problem that artists mm-hmm. might face in broadcasting their work to different different yeah. people on social media what do you think can be a good way for them to incorporate social media in their work of what you are trying right now in a way to showcase your work like so again i'm trying to like collaborate with again like photographers you can say okay. so you can like so th- i mean you need to have like really good photos or really good like right. videos to put it out and that's when you get like more likes or like you know yeah so i'm trying to like collaborate i have a lot of photographer friends so we like and i work with lights so yeah. we do like shoots with lights different kind of right. light settings and you know so kind of experiment with that one of the major uh the core idea behind pursuing an art from mo- most of the people is it it always rises from rebel or it takes you to something which turns mm-hmm. into a revolution or something Okay. So, what ideas do you have in that sense? What what kind of community impact, social impact, you think have you caused, or you are maybe you have in your mind regarding a particular social issue that you are very concerned about, or you talk a lot about that issue in your art, maybe, or trying to uh, anything that specifically you think. Uh, right now, so I'm working on a series of uh, portraits uh, okay. made entirely with like. discarded waste materials plastics okay. e-waste any kind of waste materials right. and i think i mean since living in bangalore i've seen how much the city has changed with like the garbage and everything right, you see around and right, right, things right, like right. Going, like it, it's become really bad so i think recycling and upcycling things is like so right. we, we try we try to turn like any kind of old old products into like functional art products right like so even this old it's an old drum that turned into like a coffee table so you know ah, right so you can do stuff like that you can always like reuse and repurpose things right so i think right now that's that's where i'm concentrating on is like working more like sustainable art got it so working with like uh mediums that are considered as scrap generally or thrown away so i i go around collecting a lot of these stuff to like uh apart from that if we talk about in general are, is there any artist or is there any particular celebrity or someone who has influenced your artwork maybe or your i guess there must be many yeah there are there's quite a few but i can name like a few yeah. of my favorite artists that i right. generally follow like with reference to tape there are like a couple of them called uh, Magzon from Amsterdam. Okay, and there's another artist called Mark Kaispert. I think he's from. Uh, I'm not sure which country he's from. And then with light, I think there's uh, Olafur Eliasson. Okay, and uh, there's Anthony Anthony James. Got it. And uh, yeah, I mean there are a lot of artists. I just want you to like. <laughs> yeah, no, but it. like, yeah, I I kind of like also like like to like interact with these artists like you know on right. social media. So I just right. send out a message. You know, also. Okay, so you so, generally. Talk about your work or share your work with them as well. Yeah, I mean, I just like respond to one of their stories. I just got get a conversation going. Yeah, yeah. So, like yeah. learn about the process. And, I mean, that's how I got to know about the tape art. Like, I contacted him immediately, asking okay. him, like you know this dam, telling him that this dam cool, like you know, right. like how do you do how the process? Right. And he immediately sent me a video. He sent me like oh. two three videos, like how he does it. That's interesting. And that's how I started with tape. So you know, in Berlin, tape art is a big thing. Okay. So I met about like ten to fifteen artists who just work with tape. Oh. So like so, it's it's pretty popular there. Yeah, tape, yeah, so tape, yeah. A lot of people use tape as a medium. Obviously, like you might have been to different different places and communities mm-hmm. to interact with people. Is there any interesting incident or maybe any festival, any art festival that you have been to? I any... think this goes back to again my Berlin trip because okay. uh, there was this. Uh, uh, so the the institute here, the German institute here, there was every year they have like an exchange program okay. where artists apply. to go to Berlin for a month and you know and i just applied for i didn't even know i was going to get selected okay. and i get a call the next day saying you've been selected for this oh. trip 
and that was like i think that was a, one of my biggest turning points you know because oh, that's when i was exposed to a lot of different art and that's when i found color tape as well and i started working with color tapes oh, right. and i collaborated with an artist there with it from street art so right. i think that was a great experience okay and uh, just coming back to okay. the previous point again the impact of art on community any general stance you have regarding it like in general how art impacts community or maybe not related to any social issue but mm-hmm. in general just how art impacts people so do you have any specific artistic stance about it your personal stance about it i think for me it's more about uh, you can create a visual story through that you know like mm-hmm. like most people wouldn't just understand if you tell that right. but if you get them curious to like you know through art you can like get them mm-hmm. curious they, they're going to start thinking about it how it was made what's the process mm-hmm. and you know I think that's more important, and that's how I feel art would have been. So that's why I like to have my art was more interactive, so people like right. come see it, and they're like, oh, "Wow, what's it made of? How's the process?" And they get right. curious. So, so once they're curious into the process, then there's yeah, a I think yeah, once they get hooked onto it, I'm sure right. they'll they'll go find out themselves. No, no, that 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 totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so as we all are seeing uh, nowadays, a lot of buzz in the news that how AI is also generating yeah. art, plus. there there has been all there, there always been a debate that like, okay how science can actually or technology can actually oh. i should not say create but in a way copy a particular kind of art so what is your opinion about it like how far is technology in creating an actual art which can actually compete with uh, art created by normal art I think I think tech in a way is good to incorporate in your art forms, but yeah. I don't. I, I haven't really explored the AI artwork, but uh, I really don't think that's the best way. Like you can't call call yourself an artist right. if you're creating random images, right. just putting in keywords right. and generating images. I think you can always use the help of tech. Like I use a lot of tech in my right. my artworks. Like I use like sensors and all that stuff. Right. I mean, in that sense, it's great. Okay, but I think just. If you're not doing any work yeah. and just generating, let the computer do all the work. I think you need to do some work as well as just not the computer doing all the work. Right. And is, I think most of the components in that art, if we talk about an art generated by an sure. AI and a normal art piece that we generally mm-hmm. see, a lot of missing components are there. Yeah. Because when an art goes through a journey of a day, hours, and months, yeah, it in a way puts a lot of components inside it which cannot be obviously fabricated yeah definitely so that that totally i mean there's a lot of other great digital art artworks right. but i think ai in general i'm not i'm not quite sure about how uh how good or bad it is like right. but i don't think that's the best way to like right to like be an artist or whatever yeah so thanks a lot nitin for, thank you too for having this conversation with us and we will put the links to reach out to you if someone wants sure. to get some commission work done definitely apart from that your social media as you are working on growing it more and more awesome thank you so much for the yeah. yeah and uh that's all it was very nice <laughs> nice meeting you too and also